Welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Colleen Patrick Goudreau from Compassionate Cooks. I founded Compassionate Cooks to empower people to make informed food choices and to debunk myths about vegetarianism and animal rights. I do this through cooking classes, an online cookbook, lectures and workshops, articles and essay, this podcast, and a cooking DVD. You can learn more about who we are and what we do by visiting our website, www.compassionatecooks.com. First of all, let me send a huge thank you out to today's sponsors. Mike Hip wrote to me back in December and sent me a very sweet email along with his sponsorship. He and his partner, John, have a company called Soy Candles by Phoebes, and they make the most amazing candles. I know this because they so very generously sent me three of their candles, and they were amazing. They burned longer than any candle I've ever had, honestly, and I light candles every day. It's one of the ways I take a moment to remember all the animals in the world, the animals who so desperately need our help and our voice and our thoughts. So I light candles every day, and Mike and John did not know this when they gave me these gifts. Um, the fragrances are wonderful. They're all natural oils, and, and they come in the prettiest glass cups, which now that I've used up all my candles, uh, I want to find another use for. So thank you, Mike and John, for your generosity and for your support. And by the way, their website is by Phoebes, that's P-H-E-B-E-S. And if you forget what that is or didn't hear me or lose that little piece of paper you just wrote that down on, you can find the link on my website at CompassionateCooks.com under Vegetarian Companies. I think it's under Resources and Vegetarian Companies. If you are willing and able, perhaps you would consider supporting this podcast as well. Feel free to send me candles if you like. I will graciously accept them. Every little bit helps. Uh, and as a small token of my appreciation, I send a recipe and or a button that says, be kind to animals, don't eat them, to all of our sponsors. And of course, I recognize you on a podcast episode. I recognize your sponsorship on a podcast episode. If you visit CompassionateCooks.com and click on support our podcast, you can follow the process online. Other ways you can help, um, if you have a blog, you can add a link to CompassionateCooks.com or directly to the podcast page, which you can get to. If you go to CompassionateCooks.com and click on listen to our podcast or listen to podcasts, there's a link that you can then directly go to. If you want to put that on your blog, you can add us as a friend. If you have MySpace page, you can add a comment on iTunes. You can subscribe to this podcast. I've definitely noticed an increase in the subscriptions. Thank you to those who are subscribing. But I know there are still many of you who are just downloading the episodes and not subscribing. So please, please, please subscribe to help get us on the map and get us in front of more people that will really help make a difference. I also know some people who are burning the episodes onto a CD and sending them to friends and family, which is really sweet. And I think uh, one friend, Ray Sakura, who I mentioned in the previous episode, she even sent them to a radio station. So you can do that too. All of these things help immensely. So thank you, everybody. So I was already planning on doing today's episode on iron. And then after reading an article in Satya Magazine, I was even more inspired to do so. I know I've mentioned Satya Magazine before. It's a fantastic publication. Go to Satya mag.com s-a-t-y-a mag.com uh, and go subscribe they're amazing they uh, make the connections between all the social justice causes including animal rights environmentalism human rights etc and i'm very honored to be a contributing writer for satya their december january issue which is a double issue they had an article in there about richard linklater's new film fast food nation based on eric schlosser's best-selling book the article explored, among other things, the reaction that the cast had to reading the book, the cast of the movie, you know, what it was like making the movie, and what it was like shooting some of the footage in an actual slaughterhouse in Mexico. Well, one of the actors, Catalina Sandino Moreno, who's a wonderful actress who starred in Maria Full of Grace, a powerful movie if you haven't seen it, announced in the article that she was vegetarian, but she qualified this declaration by saying that she, quote, eats a little meat because girls have to have iron. <laughs> so Catalina, this information is dedicated to you. If anyone knows a way to get in touch with Catalina, please forward this on to her. Uh, her comment just made me more determined to debunk this myth. Now, of course we need iron, boys and girls, men and women. But as with other nutrients we've talked about already, there's a big difference between saying we need iron and saying we need meat. We need iron, we don't need meat. Okay, see the difference, right? 
before I continue, I want to recommend a book, if I haven't already. It's called Becoming Vegan, and I consider it the Bible of good nutrition. I don't care if you're not becoming vegan. Just buy the book anyway. It's packed with all of the information you'll need about good nutrition, and it's written in layperson's terms, so you don't need a translator to read it. But you will find it a very useful resource that you will probably access again and again. It's available in my Amazon store, so you can access that by going to compassionatecooks.com and clicking on stock your pantry. It's in the featured favorites section and also in recommended reading in that store. It's written by Brenda Davis and Visanto Molina, both of whom are registered dietitians. A lot of the nutritional information I present in my articles in this podcast, etc., is from this book. Uh, a lot of the information is also from veganhealth.org, which I've mentioned before. It's full of great information by registered dietitian Jack Norris. Uh, and some of you may not know it, but uh, in addition to teaching my own classes around the Bay Area here, I'm an instructor for Dr. John McDougall for his three and 10 day live-in programs that he conducts here in California. I also teach for the Cancer Project and I read a lot and really respect the nutritional philosophy of Dr. Joel Furman. So just to give you an idea of some of the sources of information that I'm passing along to you so you know where this information is coming from, you can certainly check out all of these people yourself, but I'm just able to distill all of this for you in these podcasts. Okay. Iron deficiency. Iron deficiency is the most common nutrient deficiency in the U.S. Worldwide, it's the most prevalent nutritional deficiency. Worldwide, the groups that are most susceptible are women who menstruate, that is women of childbearing age, pregnant and lactating women, teenagers, and children aged six months to four years. This is true. The, the, the fact that iron deficiency is the m most common nutrient deficiency worldwide and in the U.S., this is true for vegetarians and non-vegetarians. I repeat, this is true for vegetarians and non-vegetarians, okay? This is another example of, this is not about vegetarians or vegans not getting the proper nutrition and non-vegetarians getting the proper nutrition. Did I say that correctly, right? It's not about vegetarians not getting the nutrition and non-vegetarians getting the nutrition. Hope that makes sense. It's about all of us needing to make sure that we're getting all the proper nutrition. So there's a lot to say about iron, so listen up. Studies show very little difference in the incidence of iron deficiency between vegetarians and non-vegetarians in developed countries. In fact, the amount of iron in vegetarian and particularly vegan diets tends to be higher than or at least equal to that in non-vegetarian diets. Let me say that again. The amount of iron in vegetarian and vegan diets tends to be higher, or, uh, higher than or at least equal to that in non-vegetarian diets. Why? because vegetarians and vegans tend to eat more fruits and vegetables. Vegetarians get about 50% more vitamin C than non-vegetarians. And for vegans, it's even higher. And why is vitamin C important? It's important because it increases our ability to absorb iron. In other words, it increases the bioavailability of the iron's bioavailability. So intake and consumption is one thing and healthful vegetarian and vegan diets are superior in that aspect. We're getting plenty of it, but absorption is another thing. I know you've heard of the two different types of iron in foods. There's heme iron, which is spelled H-E-M-E, -E, heme iron, and non-heme iron. Heme iron is found in animal products. Non-heme iron is found in both plant foods and animal products. And dietary factors influence our body's ability to absorb non-heme iron. After being absorbed and reaching our cells to be used for building hemoglobin and other purposes, our bodies don't care where the iron came from originally doesn't care if it was originally heme or non-heme. So that's really important to know. When people say, uh, no, our bodies really need heme iron from meats, we absolutely have to have, it's not true. Our bodies need to absorb iron and it doesn't care where it comes from ultimately. So if dietary factors influence our body's ability to absorb non-heme iron, it's these dietary factors we want to increase, we want to focus on. And what are these factors? Well, I just said above, that eating vitamin C rich foods at the same time we eat iron rich foods is one of the best things we can do. In one study, for example, in one study, vegetarian children with iron deficiency anemia in India were given 100 milligrams of vitamin C at both lunch and dinner for 60 days. They had iron deficiency anemia and they were given 100 grams, milligrams of vitamin C at both lunch and dinner for 60 days and they saw a drastic improvement in their anemia and most of them made a full recovery. Vitamin C obviously, you know where it's found. It's found in, in citrus fruits, so oranges, grapefruit, etc. Strawberries, kiwi, papaya, 
green leafy vegetables and other reasons to eat those green leafy vegetables, broccoli, kale, collards, Swiss chard, Brussels sprouts. It's found in bell peppers. You know that, right? And yellow bell peppers are red or green, all three. And cauliflower. Those are some high vitamin C foods. And if you cook citrus-based foods like tomato-based pasta sauce or sweet and sour sauce in cast iron cookware, that also increases the iron's bioavailability. Some people have asked about that too. So that's just another way that it increases the bioavailability, okay? Now, just as there are things we want to do to increase absorption, like eating vitamin C when we eat iron-rich foods, there are things we want to do to avoid decreasing absorption. So we want to increase absorption and we also want to avoid decreasing the absorption. When we consume calcium supplements and coffee and tea at the same time we're eating iron rich foods, we inhibit iron absorption. So just avoid these things when you're eating the iron rich foods. I've talked about my love of green tea, uh, but I don't drink it at meals. Okay. The bioavailability of iron can be reduced by up to 60% by the tannins in black or green teas when consumed at the same time as the iron sources. Okay. So that makes sense. It doesn't mean you, doesn't mean you have to poo poo black tea altogether or green tea altogether. It just means you don't want to eat them at the same time. Also, there are some foods that are high in iron, but they're also high in oxalates. You've heard of that. Uh, the oxalates prevent the absorption as well. So spinach, for example, is a food that's super high in iron, but it's also super high in oxalates. And so those prevent our bodies from absorbing the iron. Swiss chard, beet greens, and rhubarb are some other examples. And so, again, it doesn't mean that these foods are bad. It, they are fantastic foods to eat. It just means that if you're looking to increase your iron intake, don't look to these foods as your iron sources, okay? Finally, the other thing to consider is that vegans have a considerable advantage in the iron department because they don't eat dairy. Cow's milk, either the liquid stuff or products made from it are poor sources of iron. They displace iron-rich foods from the diet. And the presence of cow's milk or cheese in the diet has been shown to decrease decrease the absorption of iron from a meal by as much as 50%. So how come we're not hearing about this on the nightly news, all the problems with cow's milk? It's amazing. It's just another reason you shouldn't rely on the media for your nutrition recommendations, right? Okay, so how much iron do we need and what are the foods that are particularly high in iron? There are some variations for babies, toddlers, and seniors, uh, but the daily recommendation is essentially 10 milligrams for adult men and 15 milligrams for menstruating women. So obviously you see that women who are menstruating, women who are in their childbearing years, when they do menstruate, we lose some iron through that process. So just 10 milligrams for men, 15 for women, and neither, nobody should exceed 45 milligrams a day, okay? And we'll get back to the problems with excess iron in a second. Now there's no shortage of iron in plant foods, but some are higher than others. And I'll tell you some of the higher ones. And again, you can check out this chart in Becoming Vegan, or you can just do a search online to find a chart on iron rich foods. It's pretty easy to find. So for example, two and a half cups of cooked mushrooms contain 6.4 milligrams. So if you need 15 milligrams a day, you get six and a half almost milligrams in two and a half cups of cooked mushrooms. And I don't want to hear that that's, that's too many mushrooms because we need to be consuming lots and lots of, of veggies. So three and a half cups of raw broccoli contains 3.1 milligrams of iron. A three quarter cup of green beans or yellow beans contains 3.7 milligrams. One third cup of soybeans contains three milligrams. A half a cup of lentils contains three milligrams. A half a cup of cooked quinoa, you guys know what quinoa is already from our previous podcast on that, has 2.5 milligrams. Uh, firm tofu is pretty high, but brands vary, so just check the label. Generally, a half a cup of firm tofu will contain 7.2 milligrams. Uh, pumpkin seeds, pumpkin seeds, just two tablespoons of pumpkin seeds contains uh, 2.8 milligrams. Uh, 12 dried apricot halves contain 2 milligrams. And of course, you know that blackstrap molasses is very high in iron, 7.4 milligrams for two tablespoons. And then there are the fortified foods. There are many fortified foods, including different cereals, as well as various veggie burgers and veggie dogs. For instance, two of Eve's brand soy dogs contain 4.7 milligrams. Same with one of Eve's burgers, 4.7 milligrams. So 
there you have it. And again, now you know already that I advocate a whole foods, plant-based diet, but that doesn't mean you can't have these foods once in a while. It's, it's fine. And so that's just an example. So if you haven't figured it out yet, this is the kind of food we should be eating, just lots and lots of, of vegetables and fruits. Now, what to do if your iron stores are low? I've heard of people who claim to be anemic after becoming vegetarian, and most of these cases tend to be self-diagnosed. They never had their iron levels checked or had their doctor diagnose them, but they just assumed they were anemic because they were tired. Now, they could be tired for a number of reasons. They may not, have got, may not be getting enough calories. They may be eating too many high sugar foods, and they might not be getting enough sleep. That doesn't mean iron deficiency is not real for some people, but if you're concerned, just check with your doctor and get your iron tested. But first, understand a few things about what your iron status means. There are three stages, essentially, of actual iron deficiency. The first is just iron depletion. It just means that your stores are low, but you don't feel differently. It doesn't affect how you feel. The second is iron deficiency, and you may feel tired, and you may have a sensitivity to cold. The third is iron deficiency anemia. That's the one we mentioned above in that study in India where when they fed the vitamin C to the children who had iron deficiency anemia, it made all the difference. And this is where your total blood hemoglobin is below the normal range. And you might feel exhaustion, you might feel irritability, lethargy, headaches, and your skin may also appear pale. But again, check with your doctor uh, if you're suffering from any of these symptoms. Just check to see what your status is. And if your doctor thinks your iron stores are low, he may suggest that you eat meat, which is unnecessary. He also may suggest that you take an iron supplement. I also hear not only doctors recommending that vegetarians go back to eating meat, but I hear a lot of people tell me their chiropractors and their acupuncturists tell them to start eating meat again. Anyway, if your doctors find that your stores are low, first you might want to try just taking some vitamin C. Jack Norris, the, the registered dietitian I told you about, who runs veganhealth.org, he recommends taking 100 milligrams of vitamin C with two meals a day for 60 days. 100 milligrams of vitamin C tablet with two meals a day for 60 days and refraining from tea and coffee during those meals. If that doesn't work, just consult your doctor about iron supplementation, which is what your doctor would do if you were a non-vegetarian. They would supplement your diet for those who really needed it. And I hope for the sake of the patient and for the sake of the animals that they're not suggesting non-vegetarians eat more meat. They just generally recommend they take supplements, okay? So now keep in mind that though there is little difference in the incidence of iron deficiency between vegetarians and non-vegetarians, vegans and vegetarians do have iron stores on the low end of the normal range, but this doesn't seem to be a problem. For those in good health and with abundant food available, iron stores at the low end of the normal range isn't a problem. In fact, there are some potential upsides to having iron stores at the low end of the normal range. Low iron stores are associated with higher glucose tolerance and therefore could help prevent diabetes. High iron stores have been linked to cancer because of increased evidence of free radical damage. Having lower iron stores seems to protect cells from free radical damage. So consuming too much iron, particularly if you're taking a lot of it in supplement form or if you're eating a lot of fortified foods, can be a problem. As I've said before in other podcasts, multivitamins, in my opinion, should just be considered insurance. They're not a substitute for a healthful diet. Some of you may have noticed that some multivitamins contain iron and some do not. According to the recommendations from doctors and nutritionists who I respect, I don't take iron as a supplement and I get plenty of it in my diet. So my multivitamin is iron free. Okay, so you can see there's so much iron in our diet, especially if we're eating all of these fantastic foods. And once again, when I talk about a vegan diet, I'm talking about a healthful, whole foods, plant-based diet, one that's rich in vegetables and fruits, not junk food. So eat lots of iron rich food and there's plenty of it. Another note about your blood, give it away. Donating blood is one of the easiest ways we can help people. For those who are candidates, there's no reason we shouldn't give blood every two months. They make it so easy for us. There's blood mobiles all around, especially if we work in a downtown area. Lots of times they come every two months to a particular area in the downtown center. But you know, there's just no reason why we shouldn't do this. Many blood centers, and I know this is the case in California, simply don't have enough blood in the case of an emergency. And giving blood when an emergency hits doesn't account for the 72 hours it takes to test and prepare the blood. So do consider donating. Okay, well, I hope that helps clarify some things. 
I don't want people to feel like they have to become nutritionists to eat healthier, but I do encourage people to learn some basic information, not only so that we can be as healthy as possible, but also so that when we're challenged by those who aren't informed yet, we can shed some light on the truth and debunk yet another myth about eating a compassionate uh, plant-based diet. And it's also so we can respond to the misinformation such as that which comes from the media or biased sources or, as I said, well-meaning but misinformed friends and family and help inform them. At the same time, it also helps us just let these things roll off our backs when we hear yet another advertisement posed as a public service announcement or just more information or another study that came out about something. We can just say, no, you know what, I actually have the right information. We don't have to feel confused and conflicted and from all of these announcements, from all of these different studies. So you actually will be empowered to, to go forth and be helpful. Thank you again, Mike and John, for your sponsorship and for your candles. Again, you can check out their website. There's a huge variety of scents at their website, different aromas, different fragrances. My favorite's Log Cabin at soycandlesbyphoebs.com. And thank you to everyone who subscribes to this podcast. Thank you to everyone who has helped support this podcast, who's helping to spread the word and who's contemplating supporting the show and just checking it out for the first time. Thanks to all of you. And most importantly, thank you all for just being open, just for making an effort to live a gentle and compassionate life. It's so exciting and it's so empowering to know that by taking care of ourselves, we're also taking care of the earth and we're taking care of the animals. It's just so empowering to know that we can make such a huge difference just by eating kale. <laughs> I'm telling you, kale is a very powerful food. It helps to change the world. We have so much abundance. We have so much nutritious food available to us now. We have absolutely no need to kill animals or to take away their own reproductive secretions. We have abundance. And by tapping into that abundance that's available to us, we create even more abundance in the compassion that we send back out into the world um, and the expansion of our own hearts in the empathy we display for others in the peace we create by choosing a simple life. What's that little saying? Live simply so that others may simply live. Walt Whitman, the great poet, wrote, I think I could turn and live with the animals. They are so placid and self-contained. I stand and look at them long and long. I indeed look at them long and long and long. <laughs> I look at my cats a lot. I look at animals a lot. There's actually studies that show that if we have a photograph, if we, if we look at a photograph of an infant, and this is not just a human infant, but an infant, even a, a, a non-human animal, that our heart rate goes down and our blood pressure goes down. There's just something really soothing and relaxing about gazing at the face of a young animal, whether, whether he be human or non-human. I think that's really true. I have pictures all around my, my office and all around my monitor, and it really does, it just makes such a difference. I look at them all the time. The animals whose presence I'm so graced by, my gorgeous cats, the birds in my yard, the squirrels in my yard, the goats and cattle, whom I call my friends, the animals I'll never meet, but who are in my heart, the billions of animals who will never know kindness, who have no names, but only numbers, who are prized not for who they are, but only for the worth of their body parts. My thoughts go out to them, and my thanks go out to you. For the animals, this is Colleen with Compassionate Cooks. Thanks for listening.